everybody welcome back to a north texas weather center forecast and today what we're going over is that potential for severe weather outbreak going into tomorrow and as well as the potential on thursday there are two shots for severe weather for north texas we're going to go over the timing for you the threats and everything that you need to know about both days and uh, let's just get right into it so you can see as of tomorrow we're looking at the potential for tornadoes large hail and damaging winds now you can see there's enhanced risk of severe weather across northern and northwestern north texas closer to dfw there's a slight risk of severe weather and back down to the south areas right along i-20 down to the south under a marginal or maybe a little bit of a slight risk there again the main threat is going to be large hail damaging winds and a few tornadoes which a tornado or two may be strong we'll get more onto that in just a second you can see that primary area that we're looking at right now is gainesville jacksboro grand buoy and wichita falls wichita falls is probably gonna have the best chance for those sort of threats but you can see even closer to dfw we're still under a slight risk of severe weather there will still be a chance for some severe storms closer to the metroplex here's a look at that tornado outlook as well for tomorrow and a few things to note here the hatched region that you can see back out to the north near buoy uh, Gainesville as well as Wichita Falls that represents a 10% probability within a 25 mile radius of a EF2 or greater tornado basically meaning a strong tornado that is the possibility for tomorrow and anywhere in that area in general in the yellow hatched area has a 10% probability of a tornado in general so just keep that in mind closer to areas like Den, Mineral Wells, Eastland, Graham, Jacksboro, and Bonham are all included at least a 5% probability of a tornado within a 25 mile radius and you can see that 2% shaded region goes into central Texas as well as down to our south if areas for Dallas, Cleburne, and uh, as well as Greenville, excuse me. So those areas are included in that tornado potential as well. Take a look at hail potential for tomorrow. Again, a potential for large to very large hail does exist. The potential for as high as three and a half to four inch diameter hail may be possible with a cell or two. So that's gonna be another concern tomorrow. But a lot of us probably will stay on the lower end of that. Obviously, a lot of the time people say it's gonna be three to four inch hail. We're not probably gonna all see that, obviously, but also there could be a chance for maybe quarter size, half dollar size, maybe up to golf ball size with a storm or two that maybe go closer to the DFW metro so just keep that in mind but you can see back out to the northwest areas like wichita falls buoy jacksboro graham all included in not just the 30 percent probability within a 25 mile radius of large hail but also the hatched region which again represents that potential for two inch in diameter hail or larger that means hen egg sized or larger hail in that region as well and then closer to dfw or at least under a slight or marginal risk of the large hail threat as well so again not everybody's going to see large hail but that is the overall look at what we can expect tomorrow take a look at the dew points out there this morning all of us starting out in the 50s and also low to mid 60s down to the south that's all going to rise up to the metroplex later this afternoon you can see by four to five o'clock many of us are going to be very humid i mean we can see mid to upper 60s some low 70s possibly and heading into tomorrow as well we will see those or excuse me going to thursday as well you can see those two points still going to be very very humid out there some of us might even be in the low 70s by thursday morning but that's because we have that chance for some showers and storms thursday morning as well all right take a look at the instability as well you can see the instability values tomorrow you can see back up to the west closure areas like western texas values are as high as three thousand, but eventually by the afternoon hours those values will rise along where those storms are supposed to develop so one area of storms will likely develop here and also another little area of storms will likely develop here those are the two regions that we're looking at right now for that potential for showers and storms to develop which again most of those will likely be strong or severe so just keep that in mind going into the later afternoon and evening hours you can see instability values will likely start to drop which means severe weather will be lesser after about 10 to 11 o'clock but eventually instability values by thursday morning for example when that line of storms moves through our region which most of us will see storms thursday morning instability values still around two to 2500 so still enough instability for that potential for some showers and storms then take a look at the cap by the way tomorrow you can see the cap is basically not going to be existent by wednesday afternoon by three to four o'clock a lot of white space and what that really represents is really there being no cap so you know if we take a look at a sounding real quick uh you can kind of get ahead and see that there is literally no temperature inversion right here on the temperature bar you can see the red bar here it's not you know bending back like this if it was to have something like that with that red line that would represent a temperature inversion if you want to know more on the cap we actually have a cap tutorial on our uh, youtube page make sure to go check that out going to the afternoon again the cap is basically going to be non-existent so any storms that are able to develop during the afternoon will have a very likelihood of being able to overcome any sort of cap even if there was one but there's not going to probably be one take a look at the tornado parameter as well in heading into tomorrow values between one to two representing that potential again for a tornado or two back out to the west much higher values in some areas up to five which is a very high value for that tornado parameter but even by about zero z which is about seven o'clock across northwestern north texas those values as high as three to four so again the main it looks like the highest threat for a tornado threat will probably be between about five o'clock up to about nine o'clock tomorrow evening so keep that in mind primarily again off to the northwest i wouldn't expect the threat to be that high in the dfw metroplex but it is a possibility again so make sure you take the 
proper precautions and be prepared just in case heading into thursday as well just a quick look at that tornado parameter values as high as maybe one to two there will be more of a line of storm so any tornadoes that do occur thursday morning will be brief and weak so just keep that in mind take a look at the low level jet as well heading into tomorrow that low level jet is going to strengthen by the afternoon and evening hours again peaking right around you know the evening hours so again those values between about 35 to 55 knots depending on where you are so very strong low level jets going to help help those storms rotate in the lower levels so just kind of keep that in mind as well Take a look at the future radar. Obviously, this is probably what you were looking for. You can see in the morning hours on Wednesday, we should stay dry for the most part. Eventually heading closer to about three to four o'clock, you can see some of those showers and storms starting to develop. And any of these, again, could potentially pose any threat of severe weather. So damaging winds, large hail, or tornado threat. The main threat it looks like tomorrow will be large hail, but again, damaging winds and tornado still can't be ruled out. See the storms that area I was showing before does start to develop around four o'clock, a little area back out to the Northwest, kind of off your screen, but it eventually starts to develop right around four to five o'clock tomorrow afternoon. By 5 o'clock, you can see maybe a potential for a storm entering the Metroplex, again, as early as 4 to 5 tomorrow. So it's going to be a you know a late afternoon, early evening threat. So just be prepared for that, especially during rush hour. By 6 to 7 o'clock, those storms, again, that one area of storms out here to the west, likely going to pose the most, or the, I should say, the most significant potential for maybe some large hail and damaging wind gusts and maybe a tornado threat as well. These storms close to the Metroplex sharing a lot of energy amongst themselves. So the threats are going to be on the lower end, I would expect, with a lot of those storms. But again, even if one cell gets discreet, away from one of these you know this batch of storms we very well could see that tornado threat so just keep that in mind going closer to eight nine o'clock those storms move through the metroplex not everybody will see storms tomorrow night by the way some computer model runs have shown that these storms stay a little bit further off to the north and west that kind of avoid the metroplex so it's basically about a 40 to 50 percent chance right now that we actually do see storms anywhere in the metroplex eventually by nine at ten o'clock these storms move out to the north going to oklahoma by about 12 o'clock or so we should start to dry out and uh, eventually we will start to see that line of storms moving to our region going into Thursday. Here's a quick look at that severe weather outlook for Thursday. There's a marginal risk for western North Texas going into DFW and also off to the east. There is a slight risk of severe weather for Thursday morning back out closer to northeastern Texas. There is a potential for an enhanced risk of severe weather, which again, all modes of severe weather will be possible on Thursday as well. Let's go and take a look at that future radar for you. So you can see going to Thursday morning, you start to see that line of storms starting to develop way back out to our west. Again, any of these storms that develop primarily will produce maybe some damaging winds. That'll be our main threat on Thursday by about seven to eight o'clock you can see that line of storms moves toward the metroplex again all modes of severe weather will be possible but they'll be on the low end for the most part damaging winds being the main threat again by about nine to ten o'clock that area of storms moves through metroplex goes off to the east and eventually by about noon to one o'clock all those storms are into eastern texas or down to our south closer to waco so again a lot of things to keep in mind there let's take a quick look here at latest north texas weather center seven day forecast of course there's a pretty good chance that we see a very big heat wave this weekend if you haven't already seen temperatures will get as high as the mid to maybe upper 90s apple forecast to be 102 on both saturday and sunday so it's gonna be a very hot weekend ahead for mother's day eventually by next week isolated storm chances returning by monday and tuesday this forecast is brought to you by platinum contracting all dense repair in the dashner law firm